So let's uh, warp this clip. And uh, the reason for the warping this clip, it actually sounds all right the way it is now, just as a straight loop. But when I say warp the, the clip, essentially I'm gonna add warp markers to every single note, every single drum hit within this one bar loop. And there's a couple of different ways to do that and a couple of different reasons to do that. Um, the first reason to do it is uh, to give us more options in the future. It gives us the chance to move bits of audio around within the bar. And I'll show you that in a moment. But also it means that we can have some fun with a function called slice to MIDI, which we'll come to in another video. Now there are, as I say, there are a couple of ways to do this. The first one is to just do it by hand, which I'll show you in a moment. But I'm going to start off with adding warp markers to all the transients within this clip. And you, as you can see on each beat, we've got these little gray triangles. And if I hover the mouse over them, they turn into little gray markers. And that's live kind of telling us that it's seen something happening there and it thinks that that's where a warp marker should go. It's picked out a transient. Now I'm gonna just click down and there's the orange cursor. That kind of is our workplace cursor. And uh, I'm going to select all, so Apple A or Command A on a PC. And now right click, whoops, right click and insert warp markers. So there's the shortcut there, Apple I or Command I. And that's placed a warp marker, a yellow warp marker on every one of these transient peaks. Now I'm actually gonna, just going to drag up the screen so we can see everything a little bit better. There we go. Right, now what we need to do is zoom in and have a look at where these warp markers are. Now, the reason I said earlier on to, to uh, a good technique is to warp by hand, simply because live doesn't always get it right. For instance, if we look at 1.2.3, if we zoom right in, the warp marker that live has placed is actually nowhere near the region where the audio actually begins on this sound. It's probably a hi-hat, but we've got this kind of dead air here. Don't always trust live to get it right. And inserting warp markers, in this case, it's not done a, a bad job. It's pretty close. Inserting warp markers like this can be a quick and easy way to do things. If you don't want to fine tune it, if you, if you want a rough, um, position, you know, if you want a warp marker that's roughly in the right place, then you can go for that technique. So select all and then right click for the warp menu and insert warp markers. But I'm actually going to undo that and go in and just do this by hand. I mean, there's only, you know, five or six um, different transient peaks here. There's only five or six different hits. So I can do this quickly by hand. I'm just going to zoom in and Zoom right up to where each peak starts. And a phrase I always use here when I'm teaching this is kind of look where the action begins. Look at where roughly. So around here, that's perfect for a warp marker. It doesn't have to line up with one of the grid positions either. It can be anywhere. You're completely free to put that warp marker wherever you like. And you could zoom right in and get it exactly right, but that's pretty much perfect. So let's zoom out and go to 1.2. And here, I'm going to add the warp marker right where the audio crosses the center line. There we go. Live actually picked out a transient there. That's pretty good. All right. So here we go on another hi-hat. I'm going to go here this time. Zoom out. Next one. This is the snare. This is on beat three of the bar. So here. There we go. So now I've put these transients in. Just do the last couple quickly. So zoom in. There we go. Right. Now we've put these transients in. All we need to do is make sure that they are locked to the nearest note of the bar. So this hi-hat, for instance, is playing exactly on 1.13. Uh, this kick is on 1.2, this snare is on 1.3, etc. So again, we can just kind of zoom in and just drag them to the nearest round number. 0.2, and you could as well do this after you put the transient marker in. I didn't. 
just to show you where they go. But if you want it to be slightly quicker, you could do it all in one go. Okay, nearly done. And one more, just move that over. Done. Okay, so there's the beat. Let's just quickly check out beat one as well. I didn't even really look at that. So you see here, beat one, Live has put a warp marker in. You can just see it just on the edge there. Live's put a warp marker in where it thinks beat one is, but it's not quite right. So I'm just gonna clean this up, get rid of this warp marker here, just by double clicking on it and just drag that back. And that is now solid as a rock. Okay, let's play. Now the reason that some of these peaks are a little bit off place, offset, is just down to groove really. It depends, whoever produced this loop, um, you know, obviously added a little bit of groove or a little bit of looseness, especially when it comes to, um, you know, computer based music where you get in these libraries of, of loops, they might have a little bit of groove on them. And so you might just need to go and clean up because we kind of want to add our own groove later on. So we want to, I, I always did, uh, describe it as ironing. We want to iron out all the creases here and get these beats snapped perfectly to each note of the bar um, or each 16th or 8th note so that we can add our own groove later on and get creative with these sounds. And also with old drum loops we'll actually do a section on the course coming up pretty soon on classic break beats and you know when you're, when you're sampling classic break beats and warping them you know, there's going to be quite a lot of variation. The, the drums generally tend to be quite have quite a loose feel, and you need to do a certain amount of cleaning up before you can then manipulate them and rearrange them, etc., into a different rhythm, into a dubstep rhythm, for instance. But this break beat here, this is a dubstep rhythm, so we don't need to do too much to this um, in the grand scheme of things. But I wanted to warp it to show you how now we've got warp markers set, we can start to manipulate time and move some of these notes around within the bar. I'm just going to change the fixed grid to sixteenths, and now we've got our warp markers on every note. I could just move the notes around and get a different rhythm. Let's put that snare. And notice how if I pull this particular note out the snare will lengthen. So we're kind of stretching certain notes and squashing other notes to play a completely different rhythm. Another nice thing to do here is add extra warp markers in to get an even more extreme stretch. So if I place a warp marker here, uh, just kind of towards the end of this snare, there we go, I can now drag that right out and get a real stretch effect. Now the reason it's got that kind of machine gun-esque uh, roll to it it's because of the warp mode, and I'll come to that, I'll show you that in a different video, but you can have fun kind of experimenting with this, pulling notes out, and stretching things, or even squashing notes. So let's get like a squashed effect here now. Just gonna put a marker in there, change the fixed grid. Stretch out this kind of reverb ambient. And so now the loop has a completely different feel, completely different shape based on the warp markers that I've placed in, rearranged things subtly, and then added further warp markers to manipulate time even more.